Hi guys, my name is Nobu Kumano. If it's your first time, welcome to the channel. And if you're coming back, welcome back. I hope you're doing great. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, just stop whatever you're doing and click the subscribe button and the notification bell as well so that each time I upload a video, you will be notified. So finally, the channel has monetized, which means I get to like make a few bucks off YouTube now from things like ads, etc, etc. Yay, and that's all thanks to you guys. Um, so if you happen to be watching and there's some ads, please don't skip the ads. I need those ads so that I make money. So yeah, please watch the ads and also please comment and interact in the comment section because um, that helps, you know, the video get recognized a bit more. So today we're doing something a bit fun. I'm going to make what we call um, ujete. Sometimes it's confused for dombolo, but I think the, the actual method and the dough is the same, but how you cook it is different. So ujeka, that's steamed bread, right? That's the one that you, you know, you cook in a pot or whatever, and then you eat it, you like separately from the stew. And then the dombolo is dumpling, and that's the one that you like drop into your stew, um, and then it's cooked by the steam from the stew. But all in all, whether it's jekai or it's dombol or it's steamed bread or dumpling, whatever it is, that's what we're making today. So, so that we don't waste a lot of time, I have actually like pre-measured my ingredients. So, here we've got four cups of plain flour in a bowl. And then we have yeast. So I went for the easy bake yeast, which means like I don't have to like put it in a, you know, in water for some time and, and let it, yeah, all that. I'm just going for instant yeast. And then we have two tablespoons of sugar and some salt to taste. So the recipe that I have says um, one teaspoon of salt, but I think salt is one of those things that you can uh, add to taste. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to use. And then I've seen some where like you can add like sweet corn or whatever like type of veggies that you like But I'm just gonna make mine plain today. So let's get right into it Right, so we've got our flour here. Like I said, we're going to add in all the dry ingredients So I'm gonna add in my sugar I'm not gonna add this full uh, teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add half and then I'll see how how, what it tastes like and if I need to add more so for now I just add half and then I'm going to use the whole packet of yeast uh, it's seven grams so yeah I'm just gonna use the whole packet of yeast okay that's the good thing about instant yeast you don't have to like what do they call it I know there's a name for it I just don't remember what the name is but yeah just full packet of yeast in there right and then we're gonna mix the dry green ingredients until like they are proper they're properly mixed and put this away right mix 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 so this is what it looks like when it's you know mixed up so you you can't tell apart like the brown from the white and from the flour so it really needs to be properly mixed and then this is what it looks like so the other thing is that uh we haven't gotten into that process as yet but i want you guys to prepare for it so you're gonna need the dough to rise right so how you achieve that is either by putting it in direct sunlight for an hour or so or by putting it in um an oven so what you can do is like you can preheat your oven right preheat and then switch it off please don't let it cook in there so preheat your oven so that it's you know, nice and warm and then as you do everything that everything that we're about to do your oven is like warm and then when it's ready it goes in there but please make sure that you switch it off before you push your dough in there otherwise it's going to cook so after you've mixed in your dry ingredients we're now going to add water to the mix and this is where you need to get your hands dirty right so i've already washed my hands you're going to add water into the mix and you can either knead it with you know your electric um mixer but i like to get my hands dirty i feel like there's there's some love that goes into it if you get your hands dirty so i'm gonna mix now with my uh fingers so what you're trying to achieve is that your your dough should mix nicely and become elastic oh i didn't mention that you need water yeah you also need water it can be cold 
or it can be a bit warm whichever works for you so we're going to knead that uh, and with water honestly i can't give you a measurement you kind of just have to play it by the feel which is why it's good for you to use your finger instead of a mixer because what you want is to add water until and knead until it's elastic so if it's still a bit dry you keep adding and yeah that's how it works and if you feel like your dough hasn't gotten to where you want it to be please add water gradually <laughs> because once you add too much water eh, you're gonna have to start again by like adding more flour in there and then you obviously have to like you know adjust everything else add more yeast add more, and add more you know everything so please be careful um when you're adding water looks like i need to take my own advice so mine is now a bit too wet so i'm gonna add a little bit more flour and then again when you're now adding flour make sure that you <laughs> You add it bit by bit really add a little just a little so that you again don't mess things up again it's a messy job now i'm trying to add things myself because my hands are dirty so like i'm just gonna add a little i didn't like grow up eating this i just like got to eat a lot of it when i was in essay obviously and I just fell in love with it, be it bra, especially for bra, right? Because I don't like bath a lot. And sometimes rolls don't have that thing, man. But when it's like uh, your dombolo, jekwe, whatever you want to call it. And then you have your bride meat by the side. And you have like your chakalaka, yo. And then a cold bottle of Coke, Nkosiam. Nkosiam. Then you know. That is where the danger is. Okay so you want to knead not just with your fingers but with your palm as well and the thing the trick is to make sure that it's not sticky so if it's still a bit sticky you see like mine is a bit sticky you might want to add more flour which i'm gonna do i hope that's not too much and then I'm, trying, I'm gonna try and mix in the flour into the dough because sometimes the flour goes on the surface of the dough making the inside of the dough sticky then you keep adding flour and then nothing's changing so i'm trying to mix in the flour in there then see now now it's not sticky anymore so it's nice and elastic need to get this off my fingers okay cool so the next step after this is you want to you want to powder flour your surface because now we're going to need on the surface so obviously make sure that you've cleaned your surface thoroughly which i already did you're going to turn your dough onto the surface and then this is where the work happens a lot of the work happens here so you want to do this for the recommended time is about eight minutes i'm obviously not gonna no, <laughs> chill here for eight minutes um whilst i do this but basically you are kneading your your dough on the surface and if it's still a bit sticky you can see that i'm trying to like roll in some flour from the sides to fix that stickiness So yeah, I've been kneading for a couple of minutes now. Um, and so the goal is to like knead your dough until it's nice and smooth. So look at, look, oh, almost dropped it there. So look at that. It's nice and elastic and smooth. If you look at it, it doesn't have any bumps or anything like that. Just trying to mop up the flour that's on the surface easy way to clean up remember that i cleaned my surface before so um it's all perfectly safe to do this great so you have your little ball of dough which you have prepared nice and neat great so there we have it my little ball so the next step is remember i said you must prep uh, either your oven or if you have sunlight good for you 
The next step is that you're gonna take the ball. I just reused the same ball and the big red let me wipe with paper towel. You're gonna put some a bit of oil in there to grease it so that the dough doesn't stick. Oh, that's a bit too much, I think. Uh, that was a bit too much. You just want enough so that your dough doesn't stick onto the onto the bowl. And then you're going to take your dough and place it nicely in there. There you have it. Here's your donut place. So you're going to put this in the sun or whatever in your, in your warm place until it doubles in size. So I expect this to rise until it like fits the bowl um, and then it will be good for the next step. Okay, so it's it's been about uh, 50 minutes or so long is yeah it's been, been about 50 minutes to an hour since I popped my dough into the preheated oven remember you preheat the oven and then you turn it off and then you use the heat that's strapped in there to make the dough rise so let's take it out and see what it looks like now okay. so when you're putting your So when you're putting your dough outside or in the oven, make sure you just cover it with a cloth. And look at that. It's not too hot. It's now literally about double the size of what it was initially. And so what you want to do next is that you want to flip the dough onto a surface. And we're going to knead it again. Until it's almost like back to the size that it was before it went into the oven. It's like punching out the air inside the dough, I think. <laughs> this is our dough now. Next step. Now, usually, if you have like an enamel um, metal bowl and a very big pot, you can simply just place in the enamel bowl place this dough in the animal bowl then put the bowl inside the big pot and then cover it and let it um, cook from there but I don't have an what well, I don't have an animal bowl and I don't have a, like a big big pot so I like to use mugs instead and they come out nicely uh, shaped like um, in the in the in the form of a mug so that's what I'm going to use so you want to oil your if you're using an animal Oh, you, you oil that if you're using your mugs you oil the mugs same thing that we did when we we're putting the dough in there right meanwhile bring your water in your pot to boil I'd advise that you like boil your water in a kettle and then pour it into the pot and then bring it to boil whilst you prepare this I've already boiled my water in my kettle right so you're gonna pinch off A little bit of the dough and roll it into a nice little ball like this then you're gonna drop it into your mug I think this might be a lot I don't know let's see ah, I think it's fine I'll show you guys once I'm done then I'm gonna pinch off so you want to leave allowance for it to double in size so the pot that I have fits three at a time so I'll see actually maybe I'll make dumplings out of this one and then inject out of that one in the pot. We'll see. This is what they look like in the pot now. And then this is my extra dough. Yeah, but this is what they look, not in the pot, in the, in the mugs. So like I said, you're gonna bring your water to boil in a pot. Oh, forgive my stove, I spilled something there. And then you're gonna put your mugs in there. You notice that my water is pretty low. I'm just trying to make sure that as it boils, it doesn't like boil into the the mugs and then make the you know the dough wet. Then I'm gonna close this. Can I fit another mug in here? I don't think so. Nah. Okay. So then I'm going to close this. And then I'm gonna let the steam cook the bread. And that's why it's called steamed bread.
Okay, cool. So you want to leave that in there in the pot to steam for about 50 minutes. After that, we're going to tear. So we're going to put in a knife and then if it comes out dry, then our dumbbell is good. If it's a bit wet, we need to leave it in there for a bit. So I think I'm actually going to try for the first time to make dumplings with this. So the ones that you like dip into, into your stew. So I'm going to make my stew and then I'm going to come back to show you guys how to do the actual dumpling thing. Okay, see you later. Uh, Jirke is busy cooking in the pot and now I'm gonna make um, dumplings it don't work. So in my previous Sunday vlog I showed like how I cook my stewed beef. I like cooking it in the slow cooker but to save time today I sort of like parboiled the beef so that it doesn't need to stay too long in the um, slow cooker. So that's what I've done. I parboiled the beef and I fried my veggies and I put it in here. So now I'm going to pinch off a bit of the dough and then dip it in like throw it into the stew. Pinch off a bit, just using my thumb and my whatever that was. It is an index finger, I don't know what it's called, into a little bowl. And I'm literally gonna throw it into the pot. Okay, let me do it again so it's nice and round. Pinch off a little, then throw that into the pot. Let's see how many. I think we're just going to get four out of these. To make sure that they're nicely spaced so that when they... Kukumala. <laughs> when they double in size, they have enough space. Okay. Then throw that one in there as well. I'm going to slightly move that one out of the way. Throw that one in there. And then the final one in there. Okay, and then we're gonna put this in the um, slow cooker, which is in here. Ooh, and I put it on high. I think I'm gonna leave it in there for about an hour 30. Should be fine. I'll check on it to see if it's nice and dry, but yeah, I think an hour 30 should be fine. So this is what it looks like in the in the pot. And then we're just gonna let it cook off the steam. And then here, look at that look at that it's coming up nicely that one i knew was going to be small i just didn't know it was going to be this small but yeah so as you can see like my water is really low i don't want to burn my i don't want to burn my mugs so i'm going to pour in more water i should have boiled this water and now it's going to slow down the process and now it's quiet not a good idea but yeah it's coming up nicely we are at 19 minutes to go so it should be fine in about 20 minutes and then we'll come and check on it so it's been about 50 minutes to an hour and i put a timer on my stove and it has gone off so i guess that means ideally j to is good now so we're gonna quickly check what it's like so remember the test is to stick a knife in there and if it comes out clean then it's all good but if it comes out a bit sticky then it's not yet good so yeah let's see what it looks like first things first i am so proud of how this looks uh can you see how beautiful it is so i almost don't even want to stick a knife so maybe let me do it by the side there so i'm gonna stick this in there and then so it looks a bit sticky to me actually it's not sticky it's Hmm. Let me try the tooth. I'm gonna try use a toothpick. There you go. So I'm gonna poke right in the center. Okay, there we go. It's not focusing. You see, it's not focusing. Okay, maybe you can't. Maybe you can't see, but it's, I don't think it's sticky. Look at that. I think it's good. Even when I touch it, it falls dry. I think it's good to go. So now let's take it out and put it on our um, chopping board and chop it up and slice it up and see what it looks like. So you need to be really careful because it's obviously very, very hot. I'm gonna take this out, put them there. I 
think I'm gonna I'm gonna use this the smallest one to experiment so I'm gonna flip it over onto my board look at that remember that oil that we put inside that's the one that made it like come out nicely like this I didn't even have to shake hard it's just perfect and then I'm gonna use a bread knife to slice it starting at the end this is really hard so I'm trying not to burn my fingers I'm gonna slice off the end ideally you should let it cool down I think before you slice but I just want to show you guys oof I'm burning look at that I'm gonna slice it up again Here's our bread nicely done. I'm not going to chop up the rest. I'm going to let them cool down a bit. But yeah, here's our bread. Maybe let me use this one. It's nice and rich. I'm happy. So yeah, I think I'm really happy with, that, with how it turned out. And it's well cooked through. Because some people like to add butter and stuff. I just like to have mine with my stew. But yeah, this is... Our jacket. Let me just, you know, ooh, why is this one not coming out? There we go. Look at that. There we go. Ooh, that was hard. There we go. Even when you, it's nice and spongy. Yep. So overall, here's our bread. Our little lots of bread. I think I'm happy with how this turned out. Also, here's our ujieke. Nicely done. Let's check on the dumplings. Can you guys see? It is cooking child. Yeah, it's just going to be cooking for a bit longer. Can you see? Okay, the steam is not helping, but yeah. Right, guys, it's been just under, maybe just two hours. And let's see. Ooh, that looks so good. So we're going to do the same thing. Use the toothpick test to see if our dombola is all good to eat. So we're going to poke in there and see. Yep, all good. Yep, all good. I think it's all good so now i'm gonna dish up and yeah we'll see the finished product so there we have it guys we have our dumpling which was cooked in the beef stew uh, and then we have you know your veggies and your salads by the side i'm pretty happy with how everything turned out and then i've wrapped up the bread the little you no know, lobs of bread that i made from the same dough and i'm gonna pop these in the freezer and they're gonna stay there and I think they can keep for a couple of months. So good for me. Less labor because this is a very, um, yeah, it's a, it's a process and a half. But overall, I am very happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this little cooking session with me. Uh, please like, please share, please comment, please, you know, share and yeah subscribe and do all the things and don't skip the ads and all that and all that um thank you for hanging out with me i'll see you guys again next time goodbye